Good afternoon, Mr. Block. Thank you for oh, letting us come into yes, your office. Well, welcome to my office. Help us understand, what is the role of a cartoonist? Well, uh, the free press was established to serve as a check on the government, to be its best critic. And cartooning is often the razor's edge of that criticism. Razor's edge of criticism? Yeah, yes, of course. Uh, the political cartoon is not a news story, but a, a way to express uh, an editorial opinion. My opinion. Essentially, a means of poking fun, you know, for puncturing pomposity and, and getting at an underlying truth. In opposing corruption, the political cartoon has always served as a, uh, as a special prod, a reminder to public servants that they are, after all, <laughs> public servants. Herbert, it's time for dinner. Herbert Block. Son, he's standing right here. There, now it's right, Pa. See? The German Kaiser? Impressive. But why? Why here? Because I want people to walk on him. More than any cartoonist I can ever remember, people would say, hey, did you see her block today? I can't underestimate how influential they were. They, they set the stage somehow in the city. If you hadn't seen her block on a particular Tuesday, you were really out of the loop. There were many breakfasts that were spoiled every morning in Washington, D.C. because of Herb Block.
Sometimes I would see what his pen produced and go, wow. You would not have wanted to be Herb Block's enemy because he was going to nail your hide to the wall. Sometimes you'd open up the Washington Post and be like a punch in the face. One of the drivers of his work was to expose hypocrisy and lying. The influence of money and special interests and just kind of bigotry and demagoguery. Everybody in Washington was afraid of being drawn by her block. Everybody. You didn't want that to happen to you. If someone had said, all right, what do you think that guy does for a living? Uh, you know, I might have said Vermont pharmacist, but I certainly wouldn't have said the most feared editorial cartoonist in the country. Herb Block was a, a rebirth of the editorial cartoon as a tool of power and, it, a, a, and as an outspoken instrument. Herb Block is, is one of the touchstones, he's one of the, the, the tent poles of, you know, 20th century satire. The crazy thing is to look at his work from the Depression and his work in the 90s and just see the consistency of his eye, to see his ability to knock down powerful forces and try and bring up those that needed it. This is just somebody who charted his own course and was not afraid. He wasn't afraid of uh, the owners of the Post. He wasn't afraid of the White House. He wasn't afraid of the uh, witch hunting committees in Congress. He believed that an informed citizenry was as necessary for democracy as, as the right to vote. This was a guy who was a prodigy, and he drew all the time, and he developed an ease. His line, his actual line, I don't mean the, the verbal line, I mean the graphic line was saying, this is somebody who knows what he's doing, and, and he did. You know, when you come from the Midwest, there's a certain unabashed, unashamed patriotism, love of country, that you find in Washington in this day and age is very unhip. And he had it unselfconsciously and in a way that he wasn't the least bit embarrassed about. We lived only a few blocks from Cubs Park, and we kids often watched the progress of the games via a scoreboard you could see from the street. My father was a chemist and inventor and good at writing and drawing, as well as mathematics. He taught me to draw and encouraged me when I was young. When I was 11, he entered me in Saturday afternoon classes at the Art Institute of Chicago, and pretty soon, <laughs> I was winning some prizes. <laughs> 